Hey guys, your boy Bath the Minister. Uh, good to be with you again. For those of you who don't know me, I call myself Bath the Minister because I'm a father of three. I'm a community organizer. That's my profession, and I'm also a minister in Kojic. Uh, the bathroom is a place where I come to reflect on my day, and it's also a place where I come to meditate on the Word. And I do these video blogs to just give you guys an inside peek of um, a Christian life. And, and just because we are Christians um, do not mean that we do not have daily struggles. And so one of the things I do is um, I try to share with you guys out there how we, how we should overcome through the Word. Um, today I want to pose a question to you guys, and the question is, who is right? Think about it. When the last time you heard a really good sermon about salvation? A lot of times we go to traditional churches, and again, I have nothing against traditional churches because I'm a very traditional person. And in fact, you know, I love to read out the King James Version, but most of you that know me know that I only keep one version of the Bible in the bathroom. <laughs> and I haven't been reading out of it lately, but it's back, guys. It's the book. But back to what I was saying. A lot of times we go and we hear so many preachers preach about a, a different denomination, a different form of Christianity, and we all struggle about what's right and who's wrong um, in every walk of life. And a lot of times we forget to tolerate those who do not believe in what we believe. So let's get into the Word. St. John, the first chapter, beginning at the first verse, and that's where we're going to come from. In the beginning, the Word already existed. He was with God, and He was God. He was in the beginning with God. He created everything. There is nothing exists that he did not make. Life itself was in him, and this life gives light to everyone. The light shines through the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. God sent John the Baptist to tell everyone about the light so that everyone might believe because of his testimony. John himself was not the light. He was only a witness to the light. The one who is the true light, who gives light to everyone, was going to come into the world. Now we know that Jesus came into the world and that's what John was referring to, that Jesus came to give light to everyone. I believe that no one is right. I believe that when the Bible says, let the wheat and the weeds come up together and God will do the separating. I believe that literally what God is trying to say that, look, it's not your job to go around judging. It's your job to educate based on what you know. Share your personal experience with Christ, your personal walk with Christ. Don't put down anyone else's walk, anyone else's experience. Share your personal experience with Christ. Bring up two points. One point. Man in the Bible, Jesus went and cast out devils on them or whatever. And the town people was mad because the um, demons went into the herd of swines. And the town people and the swines ran into, you know, off the cliff. And the town people basically ran Jesus out of the town. But the guy that was delivered, he wanted to come and Jesus told him to stay and be a witness. And then Jesus left. What, what type of former training did that guy receive? The only thing he was able to say was, that Jesus came and healed him. He didn't have any protocol, any proper way of doing things. The only thing he had was a testimony. So I would imagine that he went throughout that town testifying of the goodness of Christ. So he didn't know a right way or a wrong way to do it. The only thing he knew that he was touched by Christ. Another point I want to bring up. The disciples came across this guy that was, you know, casting out devils. And they told Jesus, you know, Probably with the chest poked out, like, look, this guy over here was doing that, and we stopped him. And Jesus was like, well, who name? What's he doing in it? Like, he was doing it in your name. And Christ was like, well, forbid him not. Forbid him not. He's doing it in my name. He's working for the kingdom, just like you're working for the kingdom. The disciples had a problem because they probably figured he wasn't doing it the same way they was doing it. But Christ said, if you're doing it in my name, forbid him not. I'm suggesting today that we must tolerate. Think about this. Every one of you out there, when did you get saved? Did you get saved at the age of 12? At the age of 9? Did you get saved at the age of 30? Did you get saved at the age of 40? The age of 50? That means Christ waited 9, 12, 30, 40, or 50 years. He was patient and long-suffering enough until you came to Him. So why can't we tolerate those who have not yet seen the light? Why can't we tolerate those who do not agree with what we, with what we believe? 
of what we teach, we must tolerate. Think about this in closing. If Christ would have took the same attitude that some of us as Christians take, of that I don't want to be bothered with those people, I don't want to go in the midst of those people because they don't believe, then would he have came to the world? He came to the world simply because we didn't believe and he went amongst the sinners. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of your darling Son, Jesus Christ. Father God, we ask that you teach us to be, Father God, more patient and long-suffering. Father God, we ask that you help us to tolerate those who do not believe what we believe. Father God, let us exhibit your love, Father God. Father God, just let us, Father God, continue in our faith walk. Let us strengthen our own personal testimonies and share with the world, Father God. We ask that you bring the body of believers together, Father God, as it will be, Father God, in the New Jerusalem. In your son's name we pray, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hey guys, remember to hit me up at Bathroom. Um, remember to hit Bathroom Minister up on YouTube. Also, um, you know, you can email me at dbogan at charterinternet.com. dbogan, charterinternet.com. That's D-B-O-G-E-N at charterinternet.com. I forgot to spell my name. And also, you can start watching my um, video blogs on um, the website, Living in Black and White, you know, I begin to post them up there. It's a lovely Christian family network. Actually, you got to check it out also. Thank you. Be blessed.